we're talking about flipping, um, it's probably not a really big uh, thing here in Sinrasia, but it's certainly on the lips of everybody. It's kind of like people are thinking about doing it um, and probably oh, we've had, I've had some experience with some Adelaide flippers, so I've got a little bit of background with it. So I'm just going to talk about that. And But first, the stimulus package. We want to mention that because this is really like a hot topic right now. I reckon yeah. you just give it away, Mark. Look, give us your stuff. It's, it's a really interesting one. You know, awesome that the government have come out and, and introduced this stimulus package. Um, the tricky thing, there's obviously two parts to it. There's a renovation scenario and there's also the, the building um, grant that you get if you build. Now, I think what people need to understand is that there's a couple of conditions um, with, um, obviously you get means tested, income tested. So if you're, uh, if you're single and you're living by yourself, if you earn over $125,000, you're not eligible. And as a um, couple um, living together, if you earn a combined income of two hundred thousand dollars, you're not eligible. So, um, so you know, obviously, it's still there's still plenty of people that that will cater for, and it's catered for people that are probably starting out. It's not catered for investors. It's catered for people that want to actually build, and maybe not just their first home, but their second or third, or even downsizing. So, it's really designed to get the the tradies and um, going and jobs going obviously that's why they've done it and they've put in some some interesting terms in place to um i guess push it for happening now not not so much oh you've got two years to do it they want people to do it now therefore then you've got the issue that if you're looking from a building point of view you need to find some land that's ready to build on because you have to um sign a contract by december so we're really six months away and then once you sign the contract with a builder, with a licensed builder, so you can't do own a builder, once you've signed a contract regarding the, um, the, uh, the, the, the building, you have to then can start that project within three months. Right. So you really need to find the land that's already got a building permit because yeah. permits, as we know, can take some time as well. Yeah. So finding land ready to go at the moment is, is the issue. Now, yeah. I've... I've spoken to plenty of builders this week. I've had plenty of phone calls from clients looking for land. I've got, I've got a couple of subdivisions. One, it's in Mildura. There's only four lots left, and they'll be gone very right. shortly. Yeah. Um, not, I don't know who's going to buy them, but there's, there's, you know, we get there's buyers getting plans drawn up to see if they fit what they want, etc. And there's a subdivision over in uh, Gold Gold that I've got, and I think those last two lots uh, won't last long. Because it's a it's a big injection of money, isn't it? So it's oh, it twenty, is. yeah, an extra, um, I guess, twenty five on the already twenty grand that was a first homeowner's grant. So it's considerable amount of money, um, but yeah. So the forty five grand if you're building, so therefore that's the problem. Everyone's scrambling at the moment to find land, and there's not much around now. There's some new subdivisions coming up, but to be sure that that they're going to be ready with titles um, by early next year is is you can't you can't actually say you cannot say when a top when titles are going to be ready for a property because if you're doing a subdivision and there's telstra and there's power core and you're dealing oh, with all these different yeah it's so it's very, it's very there's not much land in mildura there's land coming on but there's not much land in mildura ready now and that's the biggest issue buyers are finding mm. um and but what i will say is with regards to that don't just buy land that you think that just because you're getting the the grant if you're sacrificing a location based on where you want to be, you know, right. you got to make sure you're still, in my opinion, you're still going to end up where you want to be. But obviously it's a massive, massive kickstart for, for any, anyone, you know, that wants to build. So you've got that scenario. So there's those, there's those uh, constrictions with regards to time frames, which I guess is, is hard for regional areas because they don't release land much. Maybe in the cities, they've got land sitting there ready to go. I don't know, but it's yeah. going to benefit someone in, in, in the city. So, yeah. The other one's the renovation um, is where same mean tested, like income tested scenario. Um, you've got to sign a contract before December 31st. You've got to spend 150 grand to get 25 grand. So, which is. That's a lot, it, isn't it? It is reno, a lot. It's a lot. It's a major yeah. renovation. Yeah. And you're talking a renovation that doesn't include a shed. It does include a garage. It doesn't include a pool, tennis court. Um, 
and a few like um, sp- spas and stuff like that. So it, it, it makes it really stressful. difficult. I know for yeah. myself right now, we, we, we pl- we've been planning on doing an extension because we've got a baby and we, we yeah. have one less room that we require and we've actually went down the process of getting plans and the, the plans were going to include a shed and I don't know what it would have cost, but I was expecting maybe 100, 120 it all up. Now to go and with, to then not be able to put the money into a shed and to find for us, if we wanted to get that bonus, we'd have to spend an extra potentially 40 or $50,000. That's brand so, new brand new bathrooms. That's what you're talking with that kind yeah, of money. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's a, and I, and I, I think the dish difficulty is, is that if you're in a regional town and you own a home, that's worth two hundred thousand dollars. Are you going to spend one hundred fifty thousand dollars on it and get your money back? Most likely not. Yeah. There's area. There's definitely areas in Mildura that you you would you get your money back. Yeah. The river. The river, obviously. You know. Yes. There's certain suburbs around Mildura, or you know, satellite towns around Mildura that that I think you'd comfortably get it back to certain areas in Mildura, but probably only fifteen percent of the whole of Southern Asia. I would yeah. advise for someone to go and plow in 150 which then obviously equates to $125,000 worth of renovations yeah um geez it would be some serious modifications wouldn't it absolutely yeah like you know it probably it probably really suit the people that have got a house maybe um that they've like an investment property that's a little bit derelict that they could actually yeah. spend that and really do it up in a really hot um up and coming sort of suburb or area that could yeah. really help for sure. But I think for every, for all of us that would just want to do really basic renovations, if it doesn't, if it actually excludes all those things you're saying, that yeah. makes it very limited and really difficult. It does. Which I think, yeah. you know, fair enough pools maybe, but then, you know, that that stimulates the economy as well because they, they all have not just the pool companies themselves, but they have pavers, they have fencing. They, there's so many different tradies involved in those scenarios. Yeah. Sheds, these are, all these things add value to a property. So I would have thought that, you know, if you're if you're wanting to stimulate the economy and improve value to someone's houses, you'd allow them to at least do a shed or a garage. You know, oh, for absolutely. us to be able to, we don't have a garage. For us to, to be able to, even if it was to be a garage rather than a shed, you know, that allows us to have our cars secured and we can store stuff like what like what we need as a family. But yeah. if you're if you're not being able to do that and you have to fork out that sort of money, now you're talking if if you've got a house in town that is derelict, like you mentioned, you re-stump, re, re-roof, re-plumb, rewire, yeah, you'd spend 150 Perfect. grand. Absolutely. But then who's got the money to be able to throw that amount of money on top of on, of their loan? Yeah. So it is, it is that double-edged sword. If you're only if you're earning $100,000, will you be able to afford, uh, or even less, 80, w- would you be able to afford to, throw $125,000 on top of your loan, would the bank actually even accept that in Mordura? With the value, yeah. Yeah, because it'd have to be valued. It'd have to go through a process um, and you'd have to give a really good reason why you think the value is, they'll only do it if they think you're putting two, you know, you're going to spend 125, they'll want to see it increasing in value for 100, whether it's 175 or 150,000. Because the banks want to know if something goes wrong, they're going to get their money back. Yeah, so, absolutely. So it sounds like it really is, really is going to help the city folk and probably, maybe, yeah. yeah. It, there's going to be people that will take advantage of it and, yeah. and good luck to them. I think it's fantastic. But probably from a local level, I don't yeah. think we'll see, I think you'll see lots of land sales in the next um you know, few months. Absolutely. There's no question. Anyone that's been teetering on the edge of building, they're just going to be jumping into it full steam ahead. The next yeah. bit is actually getting builders. Because if you were to, to go and talk to a builder, a good builder tomorrow and say, look, I want to build a house. This is before all this. I want to build a house. How quickly can you can you start? The conversation before this stimulus package would have been six months. Oh, now, now that there's going to be, and I've spoken to plenty of the builders over the last week and tradies, they are flat out. So yeah. what happens if you sign a contract in December, but you don't actually can't, they can't start because they're so inundated by March. So there's all these little things that my advice to everyone is just be, be careful, really know that you're doing it for the right reasons, making sure you're still buying in a good, good subdivision, good area. 
Um, but it's you've got to be financially able to do this. And and I think that's the um, the killer, particularly the renovations. I think that's something that most people go, you know, we've considered it, given what we need to do here. But geez, we'd, we'd have to spend an extra 50 grand on stuff we don't really need to spend just to get the 25 grand. So is it worthwhile? Probably not. That's it. And that's the thing. It's to treat it as a bonus, not the reason to, to do it. I think yeah. that's probably the biggest thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So there is a few things. There is a bit of confusion over yeah. it. Definitely the city guys, you know, if you've got a house. The other thing is it's you can only do it up, uh, for a renovation to the, up, if it's up to the value of uh, 750000 So then it only affects a certain amount of people in the city. So maybe mm. my opinion, I don't know, obviously it's probably just too difficult to do. Maybe they could have done a regional version and a, and a metropolitan version. Yeah. Um, that was my thought process when it first first happened. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, that's not always possible. So I guess, yeah. yeah. Just, it's a tricky one. Look, it's a great thing. And I'm, I guarantee you the tradies are going to win massively. And that's great because when the tradies yeah. are busy, the economy is busy. Everyone else seems to be busy. It's a bit like our farmers. When they're busy and they're making money, our little economy, economy in Mordura seems to thrive, which is important. Exactly. That's right. There's reasons for it, for sure. That's good. Yeah. So, cool, I reckon yeah. so if anyone's got any questions on that, I'm more than happy to talk to them if they want to call. Yeah. But yeah, it's just, um, yeah, definitely the lands. There'll be six lots of the old, I know I'll sell on the fit. I've got a new subdivision starting, um, as I mentioned a couple of weeks ago, that'll be launched tomorrow. Um, oh, yeah. And, but, you know, you, I can't sit here and comfortably say that the roads will be in and the titles will be ready by March. You just, I just can't say that. And either, either can the developers. So, um, you know, it'd be great if it was, but, you know, they may yeah. extend it too. So for anyone that may get the bonus, if, if they do extend it another six months, yeah, yeah. That, that's just pie in the sky stuff. Yeah, that's really good. And I'm glad you mentioned it, the fact that there actually isn't that much land to it because we see a lot, like, you know, for all of us, like we see a lot of things going on in Mildura. We see like lots of things happening and we just assume that there's a lot out there, that there's an abundance of blocks yeah. of land to buy when we want them, but there just isn't. Not ready to go. And that's the thing, and you know, like the, the you know, the estate that I'm launching tomorrow, I, um, you know, by the time that's ready to build on, I'd expect to be around 12 months, you know, but that, yeah. that can depend on so many different variables. So mm -hmm. these guys, these developers know what they're doing. They've done it plenty of times and will drew before, yeah. which is a really positive thing. But yeah. at the end of the day, they, uh, you know, for us to sit, me to sit here and promise someone that they, they'll have a title ready to build on in 12 months, you just can't because it, like, again, you know, you're dealing with the council, you're dealing with power core, Telstra's plenty of different, areas you have to appease before you can get those those done so yeah it's a long process yeah cool so, so should we yeah. talk about flipping let's get into it all right so um yeah so flipping i guess if you're going to do one or two a year like you could ha like seriously get some really good money like for what you do and treat it i guess flipping is like treating it like a job you can't have an emotional attachment to things um, so it is really about your demographics, doing your research, doing your due diligence. Um, and if you want to do it as a, a profession, as a thing, then you really need to like talk to a, a financial advisor because, you know, you do need to um, register as a property trader um, for tax purposes. So you really need to do your research on this. Hey. Yeah. So what? So go more into that. Um, you have to actually set yourself up as a um, set a company up as a particular property trader to to do this as a full time thing. Yes, I don't know the, the everything about it and the ins and outs, but I do know that you like you do have to set it up as like a company trust matter. You do have to, for tax purposes. You have to register um otherwise you are paying through the roof Listen, like anything that you make on top of your property you're just going to be giving it away to the you know for tax and capital gains your stamp duty all of that comes into play so you really need to have that plan in place know exactly what your costs are going to be yeah. what have a projection of what you think you could make in those areas um in the hot spots and like and and actually work out whether some areas you know i mean the due diligence is like over your financial stuff but also the demographic as far as are we targeting families are we targeting retired couples are we going to areas that 
potentially could only make us ten thousand dollars or we're going to areas that could are just going through the roof that we don't really realize now but the real estate agents are seeing a lot of um, movement there there's lots of things to consider but as far as um your tax purposes that that financial part is concerned definitely seek professional advice on that because you can really come unstuck yeah good point i think with anything relating to buying a home or renovating you know you need to probably get that financial advice from an accountant or a financial financial planner for sure so um yeah good advice yeah yeah for sure so it's and really do your research on um on the types of houses too like the types of houses a brick veneer is probably something that you can really do up really easily and on cheaper and it, and it is being about like from our next point or one of the points is like working smarter not harder as like if you've got an old weatherboard home that's you know got some termite damage they're the, they're, pro they're the properties you wouldn't touch they're the ones that you're going to have to put lots and lots of money into whereas if you've got a brick veneer um tile roof or you know color bond roof it's just very simple low maintenance they're they're the ones that you can do up and actually make some coin out of uh, there seems to be uh, i've known yeah the last couple of years that that's that is definitely a target for a lot of buyers, isn't it? Because it's structurally they they can be a bit more sound. You know, your nineteen seventies, eighties built brick homes that still have the shag pile carpet that need to be freshened up, but structurally, uh, uh, you know, solid as a rock. Yeah. So absolutely. Um, I, I mean, you still the difference is a couple of different things there, isn't there? Because I, I know with when selling a home, you get a character home that oozes character, that yeah. is still structurally in good condition. They will go better than anything. And we've, yeah. I think we've, we've seen that a lot. Yeah. Um, you know, you, you can, but then, you know, if it's not structurally sound, if you don't have, if it needs to be re-stumped and re-roofed or, you know, there's old wiring, et cetera, that, I think they're the things that you need to do your research on if yeah. you are going down that path because because character homes, they just, you know, what is it? Is it how they photograph? People love them. They love, you know, they, People, they, love yeah. the, they love the feeling of, you know, buying a home that just oozes that character. So yeah, and I think it's that's a, a, it's a difficult one. Yeah, it is a difficult one. It's the difference between like if you have one of those homes, perhaps you've already owned one and you want to do it up to sell it. Put all like put every effort in to make it look beautiful. If it just needs paint, sometimes like the weatherboards need actually sanding back. Like there's some a fair bit of work involved. Um, but if you're in the, like if your interest is flipping houses to make money on every single house, maybe you do four a year or something, then they're probably not the properties that you will look into because sometimes they're the ones that, and we, we have had experience with the vendors that we worked with, Mark, is that they, you know, you just find something else that, and then you uncover something and then there's something yeah. else wrong and it just builds and builds and builds. So the smart flipping way is to find something that's structurally sound um, a little bit older, like, you know, 20 years older, the 80s, that's that's a really good investment because you can actually make them look smart, you know, and even cement render, if there's enough, if you think there's enough play that you can make some money, like you can cement render on the outside and just have, like, just change the whole look of the house and not have that blonde 80s brick, the old yucky brown bricks. Um, and, you know, and if it's in a really cool area, then you are going to make a lot of money from that. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, it's, yeah, I guess if that's, if you're looking to do it full t time, then you probably need to take, um, take on those simpler tasks. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, and even like interior, like your, your bathrooms, you can do that very easily and, and not cheaply. Um, but you can certainly have a standard brick, a uh, standard brick, a standard tile that can look just as nice as a flash 80s dollar square meter tile if you just yeah. do it really really smartly um it, it's it can be definitely worth the exercise um but you really want to do it ethically like you know no shortcuts and we've we've you know talked to our vendors about that um mark is like you just can't you can't hide things you can't you know put a picture over a hole in the wall you can't um you know those sorts of things you really need to be ethical about it and how you do it how you present the property how um, you know, if there's things need fixing, spend the money and fix it. Yeah, it's definitely a conversation that I have with all my vendors the, the week before we go to market. This is a yeah. we sit down, we'll have a meeting 
and we'll talk about what's important and what's going to happen and the experience that they'll have throughout the next week or two weeks or however long it takes to sell. But the bit that I always touch on that I think is really important is, you know, that, you know, once you sell it, that's one thing, but there's a period of time between once it goes unconditional and you put a sold sticker on it, it's all great to sometimes at two months down, down the line, you know, you need to maintain that property. And if there's something that's not right in the house now that you think that's going to cause an issue to a buyer, get it fixed now. Yeah. Because it'll just cause problems later. And yeah. it, it, it's something that, you know, it's hard in our role when we're not aware that there's an issue until settlement day. And you get yeah. a phone call to say that something's not working or it's, you know, this has been patched up. And, you know, that I guess, you know, from our, our, my position as an agent, I need to make sure that that there is that element of trust that the vendors have done the right thing by the buyers. And, and it's yeah. a conversation I like to have. So when you are doing a renovation or if something something's not working, just fix it. Because absolutely, you just, it's nothing worse. It leaves a sour taste in a buyer's mouth. I think most of us have probably experienced, I've experienced it um, where something wasn't working significantly and it costs a lot of money. So yeah, um, it, it's want- a it's responsibility of a vendor or someone that's flipping to make sure that they are doing it well and and morally well. Morally well, absolutely. And because you want you want that smooth settlement, and there's, there's a ripple effect if you don't. There's there's like you know if the settlement comes to settlement day and you do have the issues, man, it gets messy. Hey, it, can it does. Get so yeah. messy. And it's not yeah. just the the mess with um, confrontation, mm-hmm. but it's also it's, you know, the next property you're buying is reliant on that. You might have a really close settlement between the properties, you know, selling and buying. That's affected. Like there's yeah. so many things and it's, yeah, it's just like, you know what, take away that heartache from the get-go, mm. get it fixed, spend the money, get it fixed, do it properly. Yeah. Agree. Yeah. Agree. Cool, yeah. So um, buying in good locations where what do you where are you sitting with um Sunraysia? like where is the spots that right now people might not be aware that are starting to be happening i feel like i feel like we've touched on lemon avenues a little bit like over that side how's that sitting right now yeah um i think that there's a conception of a perception not a conception a perception in Mildura that the west side's the best side you've got it as long as you're on the west side you're fine yeah. Um, I, I tend to disagree with it a little bit because there's some really good so- spots on that east side. Um, yeah. You know, unfortunately, it's ingrained in St. Asia that, you know, as long as you buy on the west side, you're fine. Well, that's not the case either because there's some mm. areas on that side that aren't too too crash hot and that's where yeah. people can fall, fall into the trap of buying in an area that's not, not considered popular. So yeah. you just got to do your research on your area you know, you've got to drive around, you've got to look, you've got to, you've got to do your research and make sure that if there's any objections to the area that a buyer might have, then maybe it's not an area that you should buy. But yeah, your Lemon Avenue, all those, those I mean, streets the, the, down there. Lemon Magnolia. But if you see, if you to try and buy into Cherry Avenue and um, even, um, you know, Chafee, we're already investing a fair bit just to get into those locations. Yes. I really, I really like down um, near Parsi Art Centre, like Washington Drive, all those brick yeah. houses down there. That, that's really popular. Come back a bit near the Art Centre, you've got Lockside um, and all those little streets just in, just tucked in sort of near the lock, between the lock there and 6th Street. Um, there, It's kind of, uh, I think that's at a point where it's not, um, the prices haven't gone up yet there they're still you know hover it's still affordable and most people are starting to get in there and renovate so i think there's been some recent sales down on near that lock uh, lock 11 sort of along curate avenue some crazy crazy land sales in that area that just are mind-blowing so i think all those areas are starting really starting to take off particularly along the river i'm glad they are because they are a really nice little spot like over that side it's really gorgeous and you know that inner city living that wasn't a fad. That's still quite popular. Yeah. You know, like everyone for a little while ago just wanted to get some space, wanted to get out of town. But inner city living, like it's, you know, a couple of years ago, very popular. It's still banging. And I think, yeah, if you're going to buy some property, like jump over to the east side, have a look around because there's a really nice yeah. view. Now the river's so, now the riverfront's so good. And, and you know, we yeah. still drive from Nichols Point to Mildura just to walk along the river grab a coffee yeah it's it's such a great vibe down there because you know you often see people you know and have a chat 
Um, there's some great little cafes down there. So yeah. that, that's why people love being down and being able to just walk there um, is pretty cool. So you've definitely got those, those areas. Um, you know, you, you go up towards, I've just sold a little house today that was up near the plaza on San Mateo Avenue. And they, they only bought a young couple, um, have done a brilliant job, um, renovating it. Um, and you could, you wouldn't say it's flipping. They only bought it a couple of years ago. The, and when you're talking about who the, the property, um, you know, who it appeals to. It's not always people that are actually buying it with their heart. You know, investors buy with their heart a little bit too. They are can be a bit yeah. smarter with the way they purchase. But yeah, two investors that are fighting for this property and they're going hard and they're, and they're, it's going to get a, get a really great result for the vendors. So, nice. um, you know, just touching on that fact that it's not always, you know, investors fall in love too. And yes. Even when they're buying real estate, they'll still go, oh my God, I love this. Got to have it. Yeah. Even though they're not going to live there. They want yep. to know that their, their their tenants have got a really good place that they're going to live in. So absolutely, who doesn't want a good looking portfolio? Like you know, you just uh, do. Yeah. yeah, yeah, correct. Awesome. So yeah, awesome. so definitely, definitely some good little spots around it. Do your research. Make sure you're, you, you know, you're knowing your capacity in the area. I've mentioned it, touched on it before. You make sure that you know what, um, you know, if you're looking to purchase it, you know, you purchase it two hundred and you want to spend fifty. You know, will you get 300? Has there been anything else in the street that um, has sold for 300? Um, yeah. Or, you know, is it is it achievable? Might not be achievable. Um, but if you've got properties in that street are selling for four, 450, then, then you know, you know you've got room to move because um, pe people are attracted to good neighbourhoods. Absolutely. And, you know, and as far as flipping is concerned, you know, the... Um, professionals like Sheree Barber, like they say, you know, 10 to 20% of the property value. If you can spend that, you're almost guaranteed to make a profit from that. Yeah. Um, and yeah, just do it properly. Like just work out what are the, what are the key things that I need to spend the money on? Cause there's lots of things that you don't need to spend the money on that you still, you're able to sell the property without touching it, which we touched on a few weeks ago. So if anyone's missed any of the previous videos, jump over and have a listen to that. What, what's the um, what's your advice on a timeline? You know, you, you buy the property, you s settle it. I know some people try and get early possession. Um, it's not a lot of people don't like allowing that sort of stuff to happen. But say, say if someone settles on a property, the advice that you give, um, how long should they hold onto it? Obviously, you're incurring costs with interest, I'm assuming, etc. Um, is it two months, three months? How how quickly do you do you from the day you settle to when you finish the renovations and get the photos taken to go back to the market. What's the timeline there, do you think? To make the best profit, they say about six weeks, which is full on, yeah. but that's a full-time renovating job. That's doing yeah, it full right. time. Um, and that's also, you know, going back to making sure that you're, you're covered with your tax and all that sort of stuff, make sure that part's covered. But six weeks, I reckon if you can do it in six weeks, that's, you know, your less, um, uh, the, the way you'll make more money. But, you know, sometimes that's not, not pop possible here in Samaria, like we were mentioning before, that the tradies are really busy. So it might not be possible to do it that quick. But if you're doing a lot of things yourself, painting, get as much as you can as you can done and um, treat it like a full-time job. And then, you know, book your trading straight away and, you know, do that time frame. But even if it was two months, three months, that's still going all right. Like if you can... Yeah. You know, that's because you know, okay. if you can knock it up, say if you can knock it over in two months, then you've got to actually get it to the market, which you can be done within. Actually, a lot of people ask me that how quickly does it take? Well, how quickly can yeah. we get the photos? We can get it on the market really quick. It can sometimes it can be within a few days, sometimes a week. Um, but you know, you get on the market, and then you've obviously got your, your period of time where you're actually selling the home. You know, well, well designed, renovated style properties, you know, in our um experience sell really really fast yeah um, so you know you might be on the market you know on average maybe a week or two 10 days uh, and yeah. then you've got your settlement settlement period so you know i guess it's probably what a four minimum four months three months yeah. at best um yeah time where where you've got money going out interest wise but you, you know you're waiting for your money to come in once you sell it yeah, absolutely. That's right. Yeah. So, it's, I mean, with everything, it's like if you can do it as quick as you can. But like you said, give, it, give yourself time. Um, don't, I wouldn't worry about, you know, like, you know, mowing the lawns and stuff. Use that time, that week in between listing with your agent 
and the photographers getting in because they can't just come the next day. We do have yeah. to book them in um, and use that week, whatever time frame that is, um, to do your outside, like your mowing and getting rid of the weeds. Like that can, yeah. yeah, don't don't put that part um, into the, the six weeks or whatever you do. Yeah, just like really be smart about it. Yeah. Well, I've got a property hit in the market today and that's she needed some carpets replaced. It was just a bit of a tear. We got yep. the photos last. We got the photos last week anyway, and it's getting replaced this week. So um, yeah. it wasn't going to. It wasn't going to affect the photography. There's no yep. point holding it off for another week. So yeah, um, yeah. There's, there's they're, they're the sort of things you can do, you know, just prior to hitting the market. Absolutely. Same with window cleaning. Don't the don't you don't have to have that done for the photos. That's fine. It doesn't show up but as much. So. Um, there's little little tips there. So if anyone wants more information, if you already put your um, property on the market, you're thinking about getting in the flipping game or whatever, contact Mark um, anytime. And if you need some advice on where to start, because it is an over overwhelming journey, isn't it, Mark? It's like you've got so many things. Um, yeah, just message me either through Facebook, my Facebook page, um, personal message me. We can work out ways that we can all work together and just get this this show on the road because at the end of the day, we're pretty good at it. <laughs> We've been doing it for a little while. <laughs> if we do say ourselves. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it, it, it's a good thing. It's always a great reward at the end of it when, you know, you go through this process and, um, you know, the first thing is seeing it done and finished and styled and then, taking it to market and then the feedback is always positive and then getting a great result it's always reward for effort um and it's it's a great experience so, it is wonderful it's such it's such a beautiful feeling at the end so much elation when you just get a really good price you've done all that work um and what you've been able to achieve from the start like you make sure you take your before photos and your after photos because it's something that you'll talk about with other people for a long time because it is an amazing achievement yeah, agreed. Yeah. All right. Um, you're, I, gonna are you're gonna touch on colours quickly regarding. Oh yeah, um, we'll touch on colours. I think we've got a quick question though before okay, I touch yeah. on colours. Oh, we'll do the colours though because that's actually a really good point because um, we can make some huge mistakes there. The question is, what's the return on flipping a house with a bit of land on it? Um, that's a really, really good question because Hands, this is the thing. This is where you got to make um, make the call on doing your research about that area. Like mm -hmm. if it's an acre property, like you know, some people just think that's way too much hard work. You might not get as much return on investment. Other people just need that property. They want they want the space. So um, I think you know this is where the demographic is, uh, comes into play. Like with families, families want the land, want the space. Um, retired Fam couple probably Fam not so much. Yeah, families pay the biggest money. That's yeah. the, the biggest part of our market is families. So if we're looking, if we're looking at the entirety of the market, you know, over fifty percent of the, I would say the market is families. And yeah, it's, the lifestyle. It's a good question actually because lifestyle properties are so sought after and they're so they're so popular with the market. It, it's they're like. What you get when you're talking like an inner city character home, you get a really beautiful home, even character on on land. They they just go really really well. You know, a lot of a lot of buyers, a lot of families want. Like I know why I bought this house back, off the one that mum and dad owned, because I wanted the same experiences for my kids when yeah. I, that I had growing up. So yeah, that's why we we're out here and we're on half an acre and it's great. We love it, etc. But there's a lot of emotion that goes into lifestyle properties. Again, it would come down to the specific house. It would come down to the specific location. Um, if, you know, I mentioned to a friend the other day about this renovate, the renovation stimulus package, the 150 grand, there'd be a few, few areas out of town that you'd, you'd say, yeah, you know, if you're thinking of putting that money into a, an acre um, in a really, or half an acre or, or whatever it is, two acres, um, mm. Some, sometimes you've got a lot more room to move in, in an area right. that's out of town. So yeah. again, it's horses for courses. It depends on lots of different stuff. So Absolutely. You know, you're talking a, a beautiful home with a pool and a shed and a tennis court on an acre in a really good spot, then you'll have people everywhere. Yeah. So I get, um, it, would be, it would be a situation of, all right, this is what the house is worth now. This is a location. 
this is your ceiling. This is what you think the, the potential is for the market. With you know, if you do this, 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 and this, you know, is it worthwhile? It would be case by case. But no, I think there's a. I definitely think there's a market for for flipping a lifestyle property, but it would have to be yeah, maybe a ten acre property that's suited for horses. Where you're talking a particular market there. So right. yeah. Uh, it's I like guess, anything. I think it's like anything, isn't it? Like it, you know, only only certain areas in town you would flip, and only certain areas out of town you'd flip. Absolutely, because you know you got to consider the things like town water, yep. availability, all those sorts of things. So yeah, definitely, it's just yeah, weighing up your options. The because other someone, thing, the, the, other, the yeah. other thing about lifestyle properties is if there's water attached to it, um, then sometimes it's a bit harder for buyers to get a, a loan. So if there's water attached to it. You, know, you might kiss goodbye your first home buyers. So th there's so many different things to weigh up. You know, if it's in a certain postcode around Mildura, some banks don't even look at it. If it's farming really? zone, yeah, yeah. There's so many, like Commonwealth Bank, they'll only loan 88% to a first home buyer if it's in Merbin or Red Cliffs, just purely on the postcodes. Wow. It's, it's crazy, but that's just the way it is. There's so many different little rules that people don't understand that they might come up against if they're buying or selling. Yeah. Is that the same for water rights? If they've got water rights, is yep. that what you're saying? Right. Okay. Yep. The, the bank, the banks don't lend money for the water. So if there's 10, 15, 20 grand worth of water on that particular property, you know, you might have town water plus a few megs of water as well. That's a bonus. You have yep. to find that money yourself because the banks don't lend on it. So we right. have to split, we have to actually split the value up and say, all right, we'll take that 10 grand off the, the value of the, of the property or the purchase price. Yeah. And you only you only pay stamp duty on the value of the property, not the water, but the banks don't lend. So there's massive, you know, situations where, you know, you might find that a buyer or a first home buyer in particular just will not be able to buy if it's got water or if it's in a postcode, unless they've got a really significant deposit. That's really interesting. Good to know. I'm glad mm. that question came up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right, um, I don't think we have another question. So I'll just tell, uh, touch quickly on the colours. Colours if you're flipping um, and strategically wanting to do your house up and present it for sale, um, it's all basically going with the neutrals. Neutrals, neutrals. Sometimes you can't on the exterior. Sometimes it's a bit of a job that you, it's something that you can't change because you have your gutters, your fascias that might be a bottle green um and you know like it might the exterior might be you know a cream for instance they're like it's that if you can paint it yourself then go for it definitely and change the color scheme but make sure you like count in the windows because the windows are part of that color scheme um and then that's an expense again and sometimes it doesn't work just to paint over aluminium windows you gotta do things properly so really think about the color schemes and what's going to work what's going to be attractive from the street um, with your facade that and what you can and can't change. Interiors, interiors are probably a little bit easier to change. Again, there's the, the window colours, you have to take that into consideration. So if you're thinking I'm going to go, you know, do the, the greys and the whites um, that's in fashion right now or has been over the last five years, really think, have a look inside. If you've got cream windows, that's not going to work. If you've got green windows, that's not going to work. They're just, it's going to probably be more of an eyesore than what's already there. So you, those are the things, those things that are really, that you aren't able to change unless you're able to change windows, unless you're able to change um, the splashback tiles, which is probably one of the key things that I would change. Um, you know, if you've got cream tiles and you're not wanting to do that and you want to put grey walls, that's going to look a bit of a mismatch. It's going to look ugly um, and not so nice and appealing to people to buy. So when it comes to colours, you have to think about every little corner of the home um, to make it work and real and have a plan. Have, you know, even if you create mood boards so that you can actually see the colours together and make sure that it works, you know and not take the shortcuts and just think in your head oh yeah cool I'm just going to go buy this um, gray paint today or this um, white paint that's a cool tone and you've got the rest of the home's got warm tones in it and it's just gonna you know it just doesn't look that great so that's you really need to do your homework on that it's not just about going okay that's the popular color is antique white USA from Julux I'm just going to use that because you have to factor in all the other aspects of the home. So it sounds a bit daunting a little bit, but it's not 
is, is if you get advice from someone, that's the key thing to do because it's it can make or break the property. So basically, call you. Pretty much. <laughs> no, <laughs> not at all. Not at all. No, that, you can, no, that, this, but, this, that, but that's what I say because I, I get that and, and, I, and I've said to you in the past, you know, when we painted this house, I remember Sam put like four whites up on the wall and I'm like, okay, <laughs> they're white. But I can see we had a bit of timber in the house we had to work with as well. So, um, but and I, I get questions all the time from clients. Oh, well, you know, what color do you think? Well, should we do this? And I'm like, that's a Shona question. You know, it's not a me <laughs> question because, you know, the slight mistake, the, the slightest mistake, you know, yeah. is I remember Bowen Crescent was um, crucial. They had beautiful timber windows, but they didn't work, did they? And, nope. and I thought, oh, should you paint? And I thought it was a risk because they're nice timber. Oh my God, how good did the property come up once they were painted? So it was once a lot more work. Painted. Yep. Yeah, it actually just made the property look amazing. So Absolutely. it's really, I would, if you're not sure on painting, if you're not sure on those colors, don't even consider trying to do it yourself. In my opinion, I'd be getting advice from someone like Shona because the, the way a property works, whether it's the carpets and the, if it works, it works and the buyers will just feel good once they once they're in the door and they feel good and they like the property for whatever reason it is then you're hands down going to get a good price absolutely it just makes a difference if people see themselves and they fall in love with it when it looks right and sometimes they don't even know what the elements that are that are brought together to make it look right but they just feel it so yeah it is cool like and even you know even if you're not in a position to hire a consultant to help you with that there's lots of you know google youtube video your paint distributors they're amazing they're, they're mixing paint paint all the all the time so they know what colors work with with other colors so there's lots of information there but definitely don't try to do it yourself if you don't have that flair yeah agree yeah Cool. Well, we don't have any more questions. So That's a really good topic today. I'm glad you talked about the stimulus. That was really interesting um, because I sort of heard a little bit about it, but I wasn't sort of really educated on it, but that was really good. Um, if there's any other questions, you can always uh, ask us with our personal message, call us, text us, whatever you need to do, and um, we'll help you out. That we okay. Will. We'll be ready for next week, hopefully. Absolutely. Yeah, we will. Okay, <laughs> thanks, guys. All right, guys. Thanks for jumping on. We'll talk Peace to you China. another time. Bye.